I have a friend that has been traveling the world for literally the last year, stopping in different countries, working as a software engineer. Like that's how flexible it can be, you know? And it can afford you like a really fun lifestyle. Hi everyone, my name is Bo. I'm an AI engineer and I have three years of experience. Hey, I'm Kristen. I am a front-end engineer and I've been a front-end engineer for seven years now. I'm Amanda. I have been working as a back-end engineer for about five years now. Generally in the morning, I like to have my focus time work on, we call it a ticket, right? Which is something that you're actively working on. I have meetings in the afternoons. Engineers, specifically software engineers, generally like to have their meetings and such in the afternoons. Similar to you, I try to have like focus time where I like really dive into a task. And then from there also, I think similar to you, it's like looking at pull requests and seeing um, how it can help with other people's work. That's one thing that I feel like people often forget with the roles that like you're very much working with a lot of different other roles like product managers and data scientists and yeah. engineers and other leaders and I feel like that's really a cool part of being a software engineer is that it's super cross-discipline. Software engineers across the board generally have like a very similar yeah. style of just like wake up, go to office like stand up, do work. I do end up working with a lot of like designers because I do work on in the front end. So we'll like get on meetings and we'll hash out the designs. One thing I think about often is the misconception that you have to go to college to be a software engineer. Yeah. I think now more than ever you don't. I think boot camps are a great way to start. If mm -hmm. you already went to college, you don't see college as a pathway for you and you just want to get a taste of like, hey, can I do this? Is this something that is like easy for me to understand. So I feel like exploring those pathways is a super good way to start. Someone who can communicate well. Yes. That's I'll... so important and you yeah. don't, it's not as emphasized. Because people think that when you're a coder, all you need to do is like know how to code, but no, you gotta know how to talk to people. Yeah. Being super methodical. I would add to that list is proactivity. At a lot of companies, like they really want you to be the person that's solving the problems or being curious in terms of like, hey, like I saw this thing isn't as efficient as it should be. Those individuals really thrive in terms of like their work being seen and also like being able to really create impact at the organization. I feel like in this field, you always have to learn. Things are always changing. And those are, I feel like, all things that they sort of assess in an interview, right? There are still some fundamentals that you need to understand, like data structures, algorithms, and that's one style of interview. And I feel like you guys probably experienced this too, but like there's a lot of websites that sort of gamify this process, and they give you a problem and you have to answer it, and they sort of show you how well you do on it. Another style of interview is having the systems level design mm -hmm. interviews. Oh, yeah. and that is like when you say, okay, you passed that round. And so now we're going to see how this candidate designs a system. And that can just look like literally an open-ended question, like design Facebook. We call it like the leak code style of yeah. questions. Have you guys gotten like logic problems ever in an interview? Some companies often ask questions that are testing your logic and math skills. Like one example of a problem I had was how many tennis balls could fit in an airplane? And I had to like solve I that problem. Those. Exactly, yeah, they're are... so weird. Another one that I've gotten is also simulating an on-call environment. And so I've been in interviews where they say, hey, we're gonna send you some error message and we wanna see how you figure it out. To practice for that, I ended up using ChatGPT to basically like give me an error and go through with me to simulate the problem. I think coding and getting the problem done is one thing and I feel like people focus on that, but the way you talk about it, the questions you ask, like again, like your methodology is super important. Show who you are through your work, I think is a really valuable skill set. And ask questions in interviews even generic questions, um, just to help you better understand who am I interviewing with? Like, who could I potentially work with? Interested in learning more about succeeding in today's job market? Search Indeed and YouTube for more well-engineered advice. Really depends on field. Yeah. So if you're like, um, what is it, like a quantitative engineer, you're making 800K. Yeah. For entry-level front engineers, we're probably making about 120, yeah. 140. And then it goes up to like 300K. And you have to include base as well as mm -hmm. stocks or potentially equity. Because if you're working for a startup or let's say a smaller company, a lot of it is you have that base salary. It can be a little bit less, but you're really banking on that equity or the fact that, hey, like if this startup goes public or is successful or gets bought out, right, whatever that means, you're gonna really like have an even higher return. Every company that I've worked out has like a general rubric that's like, this is what a senior engineer does. This is what a mid-level engineer does. So you know, hey, if I wanna move up, this is the things that I need to do. In my experience, most engineers that I know generally just end up being a higher level IC. 
I see as an individual contributor. There are some software engineers who end up being a manager, but I feel like you gotta really like working with people. At least in the media, like, there's a very much a romanticized image of software engineering where there's like all these perks and like people are playing ping pong and there's like a slide at the office. The golden ticket. Golden the ticket. Golden ticket. The yeah, golden sure. that, you, that definitely existed, I think like right before AI really kicked off. Yeah. Like I think this is something that a lot of yeah. like engineers refer to as the promise of a good life. But now it's not really like that anymore. Yeah. I really like feel for the new engineers. Oh, it's hard yeah. out there. Yeah. You can be so qualified and have this like great resume and you're just competing against so many people. Again, like with AI and that shift, there's definitely less of a need for engineers. Yeah. I think people should still be an engineer, of course, but I think it's just a different ball game now. You really have to understand what AI is and how to use it. Because it's gonna make your work easier too. It does, I, I use love it every cursor. Day. Oh my God, cursor's great. Every engineer that I know uses cursor at this point. There is so much flexibility that you can have and it doesn't have to just be in classes and just working for a company, right? You can literally choose whatever path you want to make, which is why the field is, yes, technical, but it's just so open and a creative field, which I wouldn't expect yeah. when mm. I first joined. I would say like the amount of lines of code that you've ever written are reflective of how much knowledge you have. To me, it's like if you're a good writer, like the more books you write, the better writer you'll be. And I feel like it's the same way with coding. Asking for help is not a bad thing. Mm. I think relying on people is not a bad thing, especially early on in your career, like you were saying. As a software engineer, you're building products that sometimes billions of people use. Like if you work at a big company, yeah. like a search engine or something like that, the features you're making are like in people's everyday lives. And I feel like I've had friends that have worked on features that I use every day and they show me and I'm like, oh my God, I love like this like maps feature or whatever. So it's really cool to see that too. Check out more job insights right here on Indeed's channel.